Hello, friends of the internet. Welcome to Squared Circle Sagas, where we talk about the brief. It's a brief rest. Mm, it's a brief wrestling podcast. Is the history of the wrestling guy we speak of when we're talking. Yeah, from their first step in the ring to their final count of three, we're crowning the world's great wrestler on their grappling talents. <laughs> Today, we're, we're talking our first ever uh, Japanese man wrestler. His name is Kenta Kobashi. If you've never heard of him, you should, because he's great. He's really good. He's got the second most five-star matches in the history of wrestling. Yep, the guy that has the first most is his like best friend, so... There you go. Yeah. That tells you how good this boy is. They're best friends because they're best five star wrestles. Yep. Not only is he a great wrestler, he's like super famous in Japan. Like everybody knows Kenta Kobashi. Which if is you... kind of weird. Yeah. Right. If, if you if you do this thing where you hold one fist up and you chop 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 chop, everybody's like, oh dude, yeah. Kobashi, right? Hell yeah. Yeah. That was. Like, I love that. I love that move. I feel it's like so good. I feel like he's like like the Hulk Hogan of Japan, but way better wrestler. Yeah. Like, j- just in the fact that, like, everybody knows him. Like, if you say, yo, hey, Kobashi Kenta, yeah. Deska, they're going to be like, Desyo. <laughs> <laughs> little ja- Japan humor for you there. Japanese boy humor. So, Kenta Kobashi was born on March 27th, 1967, in Fukuchiyama, Kyoto, Japan. Japan. Um, I don't know if you could. I couldn't find any information about who his parents were, what they did, or anything. Or there's really not much about his personal life um, yeah. that I found. Like the only thing I could find in his personal life was who he married, and right. He's got a he's got a daughter. That's <laughs> yeah, same. And then like yeah, where he was born and the uh, what he did in high school. Yeah, that's yeah. It. And the, yeah, okay. So then, yeah, I because I was I was curious to know if like he had a family history of wrestlers or anything, but I don't know. Probably maybe, not, since it didn't. Maybe since I couldn't was, find anything. Maybe he was like adopted or something, and they. they it's know. not. Well, maybe it might just be like a Japanese thing. Like, oh yeah, they're like it could like be. super private, yeah. and stuff, you know. So, um, they're not like the Kardashians. Yeah, everybody knows everything about them, huh? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so Kento Gobashi is now. 52 years old which i was super surprised to find out because he's only he's as old as the undertaker oh yeah wow like, like minus two i think the undertaker's like 54 and he retired six years ago and yeah, yeah. And he retired six years ago like i thought i thought kento kobashi was like was like yeah 65 by now yeah because because he retired and i was like and he probably just because he's such like a huge name and like everybody knows him, so it's like, oh, this dude must have been around forever. Like, yeah, yeah. He's like one of the super old school guys, but no, he only started wrestling in the late eighties, which is wild for me to find out. I guess I guess too though, I never my only exposure to Kento Gobashi was from like recent years and just seeing like YouTube videos of like like big pops when he when yeah. he came out and stuff, like after he became a legend, like yeah. currently. And I'm super new to the Japanese scene, so I don't really know many Japanese wrestlers yeah. right now. So I didn't really know who he was until we decided to do this episode on him. Aren't you glad we did? Yeah, it's really good. This boy's fucking amazing. Yeah. Like that that was another thing. I had never watched any of his like greatest matches before. Cuz again, I had only watched the matches where he's already old like right before retirement. Yeah, yeah. And everybody's like, "Oh, he's one of the best of all time." I'm like, "He's he's really good, but one of the best of all time." But then now I'm like, "Fuck, yeah." Yeah. This is yeah. fucking incredible. Yeah. Um I lost all my notes, but I do remember like really big plot or like um bullet points that I made. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's good. That's good. Yeah. We Okay, that's a little sidebar. We come back. Yeah. In high school, he practiced judo and he played rugby. So he was probably he was, a really good rugby player. He he's was, a big fucking guy. He's yeah, especially for a Japanese dude. Yeah, he's six one, like two fifty. Yeah, you imagine he's playing against other Japanese dudes who are like average, like five eight. Yeah, and he comes out just <gasps> just six, yeah, like, six feet tall. Oh fuck! Oh god! <laughs> we gonna die. Uh, after high school, he got into bodybuilding. While well, he was just it shows he's yeah, and he was working guy. normal jobs. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, then he he really putting on them muscle. 
And like that that's one thing I could say Kinto Gobashi's arms are fucking crazy big. Yeah. Like yeah. without without being like like chisely like Arnold Schwarzenegger shit. Yeah. Like they're fucking just like ham hocks. Yeah, like that was like one thing one of my big bullet points when I was like watching the match. I was like, God, this guy's a fucking monster. Yeah. He's just huge. He's big. And like big like guy. and like like you said, he's not like super cut. He's just a big fucking guy. It's, yeah. And then yeah. like but like when he lifts like other people up and like he like flexes his muscles, it's like, oh wow, yeah, there you they can are. See, <laughs> like the power he's yeah. like, <laughs> Man, that was a good anime sound yeah. effect. Thank you very much. Um, and like we, like we said, we don't have very much information on his personal life before wrestling. So uh, that's the end of his personal life before wrestling, everybody. That's all he ever did. That's all he did. He went to high school. He, he was yeah. born, went to high school, and had a regular jobs and bodybuilded. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then went to judo in Japan. Nope. What? <laughs> <laughs> that was before. Uh, <laughs> Well, then he went to the. I got dyslexic there for a minute and dojo. I read as judo. Oh, is that what? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I was uh, like, no, he went to judo. It, it's not even how you would spell judo. Yeah, so you, I don't, you did a little wrong. Judo. <laughs> well, anyway. He, yes, he did go to the All Japan Pro Wrestling Dojo in on, I have the date right here, June, June 20th, 20th, 1987. He started training there. He was trained by Dory Funk Jr. Who trained everybody, apparently. Yep. Our, <laughs> our fucking boy so far. Yeah. Uh, Giant Baba, Kazuharu Sonoda, and Masanobu Fuchi. Who is Giant Baba? Giant Baba. Best wrestle name ever. I've Yeah, right? I don't, I've never seen him wrestle. He is the co-founder of All Japan Pro Wrestling. I know almost nothing about him other than he's another, like, super famous legend Japanese wrestler. His name is Shohei Baba. And he's fucking huge. He, I believe he had, like, a similar condition to Andre the Giant. Like a a gigantism sort of Mm. thing. Because when you hear him talk, it sounds like Andre the Giant, just like in Japanese. Like, oh, oh, is he the guy? Oh, the yeah, he's the guy. He's and on the, commentary. The commentary guy on the yeah. Stan Hansen match. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, you can hear him on there. Whoa, holy shit! As Giant Baba, he's he's another like super legend Japan man. But I yeah, he I was know next to nothing about him. He was six ten, three hundred eleven pounds. No, he's a giant. He wow. went by many giant names: <laughs> Baba the Giant, <laughs> Big Baba, Giant Baba, Giant Zebra, Great Baba. Whoa, you went by a lot of Baba. different ring names. Babyface Baba. Oh, I like that one the best. He did not have a baby face. Mm-mm. He had anyway. a strange face. <laughs> Just a little, little sidebar on Giant Baba real quick. Giant Baba, the, one day we'll get an episode on him. Yeah. Thanks, Giant. Uh, Kento Kobashi made his wrestling in-ring debut on February 26th. 1988 and uh his earliest match what he was booked by giant baba to lose his first 63 matches oh yeah (laughs) i have a note in here that says why 63 yeah that's pretty random yeah like why not like 50 or 60 even according to this it was all part of his big master plan that even in defeat the fiery charismatic kobashi shined and his gutsy never say die efforts earned him the rookie of the year award in the Japanese press. Giant Baba was fucking right. Yeah. Because Kenta rode that wave forever. Like everything I watched for him, he, he, it's like, fucking, I got the guts. I'm the underdog. I can do this. Beat the shit out of me for a long time and then I'll come back, baby. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah the earliest match that we could find was on April 2nd, 1988, against one of his trainers, Masanobu Fuchi. And let me just say, my first reaction was, wow, he's young. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I had only seen him from recent years, old man Kenta. And, like, watching this, I was like, is this the right guy? Yeah. Oh, like, it is. I watched that match. And, like, I, I had seen pictures of him because we were, like, doing, like, mild research before. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this isn't the same guy. Yeah. <laughs> I, right? I was really confused. Yeah, yeah. And he's not he's not as big yet. He's still large. Yeah. He's yeah. still impressive. Um and I I will say in this in this earliest match I was I was impressed by 
uh, like his power moves and the just the like muscle struggle <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> call it of of like all their like mat work and holds and stuff yeah, yeah. of like him just like trying to get out of them and just like rawr, like flexing and shit yeah, that was one of my notes for that match was that um there's a, many holds yeah yeah, yeah. and I and I, that's a, that's been pretty pretty common so far. Mm-hmm. And everybody's like first match is just like all holds and stuff. You know, I guess that that's that's like the easier thing to yeah, do. It, it's it, I I imagine it's also a lot safer. Because oh yeah, you don't have like a new guy picking you up trying to slam him sure, real hard. Yeah, I mean they did he did do some some power moves, but they're like like pretty relatively safe ones. I would yeah. say. I uh, I don't remember any specifics. I think he did a suplex at one point. Or maybe his, maybe the other guy did a suplex on him. Um, but yeah, that's and um, I, I like the fact I brought it up before. I said the muscle struggle. Yeah. But I like the fact that he was selling the fact that he was struggling like against the the more elder statesmen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that he put a lot more. It seemed like so far of the of the earliest matches we've seen the the last three he put a lot more heart into showing that like he was trying i guess it's it's hard yeah, to say I, I could see that i see I, I i get what you're saying you know it wasn't it wasn't like um it wasn't like oh here we are doing this and then we're gonna do the next thing and the next thing it was more of like he was holding him and he was like i gotta get out of this yeah, yeah, it it seemed like they were really trying to portray it as like an actual like, all right, kid, you're gonna go up against one of your trainers now. Do your best. He's like, fuck, I got, I got really do this. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. You know, I, I really got that feeling and I liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, it was good. And even though the video we watched was like a highlight reel, basically. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of weird too. Cut out all the all the in between stuff. It was just the moves, so it felt it felt really weird and awkward to see that, but. It was still it's still pretty good. Um I th- I think maybe like probably like the best first match we watched for everybody. I would say of the of the four, yeah. Yeah. Probably so, by so far. far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody else is, is kind of boring. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. Um I mean Kurt Angles was okay. But it was still kinda of like Well Kurt Angles was was weird because it was him against another rookie. Yeah. So it was like they were both pretty like green yeah. and didn't, didn't know exactly what they were doing. But I like this one because it was him against his like super seasoned veteran trainer. True, 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 true. So it's kinda like this this was old the, goat showing the young dog the ways of the goats. I don't know if this was the match or if it's the next one. Um was this the match that he came out to Danger Zone? No. Was that the I don't think no, I don't think they had they showed the entrances in this video. Okay, so it's it's the one. With... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was one of That's my right. notes. I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I put so much emphasis on the entrance music. Well, like always, it's important. I always catch one of them. It's important. Easy lover. Easy lover. <laughs> Easy lover. <laughs> Danger zone. That was really good. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Danger Zone, easy lover. Well, I mean, do you have anything else to say about the first match? I, no, I mean, it's pretty. It was like like what standard. four minutes or something like that. It was yeah, pretty short. It was too. Short. I mean, um, I imagine the actual match was yeah like twice that length. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably for sure. Was, it, was, it was short, like all the first matches we've watched. It's like a couple minutes long. Yeah. Well, after that, he went on to lose uh, his 63 matches. Mm-hmm. And then in May of 1989, he won his first match against Mitch Snow, some jobber from Jim Crockett Jim Promotions. Crockett Promotions. <laughs> Thanks, Mitch. <laughs> Mitch Snow will go down in history as being the first man ever to lose to Kenta Kobashi. Which is good. Think about that. Yeah. Mitch Snow, don't know what else you've done, but you, you done lost to Kenta Kobashi. So, are you related to Al? Al Snow, 
I hope you are, because that's another thing you yeah. got going on for you. Maybe, maybe, maybe the head that Al Snow carried around was, was Mitch Snow's Mitch? head. <laughs> Oh, that would have been hilarious. <laughs> this is Mitch Snow. He lost to Kenta Kobashi for the first time ever. This is Kenta Kobashi's first win right here. <laughs> this, this, the, the head of this man put over Kenta Kobashi forever. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah. Also, during 1989, the Road Warriors were in oh, all yeah. Japan. And they taught Kobashi the Road Warrior workout. Yeah. Which I is. Like, I like that. Yeah. That's a fun little fact. Just like a little, like, that's like a total, like, bar. Um, T- totally. Trivia night. Yeah. <laughs> trivia question. Oh, man. Dude. During 1989, which American wrestling tag team trained Kenta Kobashi? Oh, man. We should do wrestling trivia night. That'd be cool. Let's host one. I mean, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, okay. I'll call around. Yeah. Holy right, shit. right now. That was okay. fast. <laughs> Pause the podcast. And we're back. So we just <laughs> made arrangements with a local bar. We booked our trivia wrestle. Wrestle yep. trivia night. Come on down to, to Pick Boys on Tuesdays. <laughs> for wrestle Tuesdays. <laughs> Pig Boys. Uh, he first gained some prominence as uh, a member of the Mitsuhara Misawa's faction. Mm-hmm. During um, Misawa's feud with uh, Jumbo Suta. So I don't know if you, have you ever heard of Misawa before mm-hmm. this. Like. No, he's he's another. He's like, I from what I've seen, I've never watched a match with him before. But from what I've seen, he's the other guy. By the way, he's the guy that has the most five star matches. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's the boy. He's like, he's like what every wrestler would consider the greatest wrestler of all time. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. He's like a super wrestler's wrestler. Kind of similar to what we were saying about, like, Ric Flair. Whereas, like, the people, the general public would consider, like, Kenta Kobashi to be that. But, like, looking at it from, like, a purely, like, talent and, like, technical standpoint, Misawa would be higher than Kobashi. Yeah, and probably the way he was in, like, the locker rooms and stuff. Oh, yeah. Probably has a lot to do with, like, how wrestlers feel about who the greatest wrestlers were. Totally, yeah. yeah. Cause yeah, they're they're pro- they probably like stories about like, like yeah. meeting him back, like, backstage and stuff. Yeah, be like, oh, I met Misawa. Like, oh my god, cool. he walked by me and he like, like I was freaking out he and shook he just my hand. he just like stopped and he was like, hey, what's up, kid? I was high pissed. <laughs> I peed my pants. <laughs> um, uh, Mitsuharu Misawa is uh, gone, by the way. R.I.P. Forever. I believe mm-hmm. I believe he died like ten years ago. Yep. Um, super June thirteenth, two thousand nine, of cardiac arrest. Yeah, that, that poor guy. Um, well, I mean, and uh, Jumbo Suruta is another name that I've heard of too. I never, I, I know nothing about Jumbo Suruta though. I, I think he's pretty famous in Japan. Uh, um, <laughs> some other big boy, maybe. He, yeah, looks like it. He is also passed. Oh. He complications from a liver transplant. Dang it, Jumbo. Giant Bob is also, you know, he's gone too. Yeah. But he was. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. He that, got that giant thing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. <clears throat> so when uh, when our boy Kobashi was uh, in Misawa's faction, they were basically building him as like a super baby face in that he would always take on like one of two roles depending on who was in the match one role would be like the gutsy underdog if he was you know in like a tag team with misawa or something and the other role would be as like a big brother if he was working with with some of the rookies of the promotion he would like come out like try to try to help them win against the 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 Bad boy opponent, be like, bad oh, guys, you can yeah. do it. Come on, I'm your big bro. You got this. That is one thing I've noticed about like early on New Japan stuff is there's like a lot of trainers. Oh, always yeah. like on the outside of the ring, like yeah, like like a boxing match kind of like trainer where they're like on the outside and they're like, yeah, you gotta oh, dodge this right, <laughs> Rock. You gotta yeah. dodge to the right, Rock. Well, I think I think in like all Japan, I haven't I haven't seen too many all Japan matches, but they were really trying to build it like that like a sort of boxing sort of more of like an athletic competition 
rather uh, than okay. like a like a WWE thing, you know? Gotcha. I think it, d- wrestling historians, let me know if I'm wrong, please. Don't let me know if I'm wrong. I want to think I'm right forever. Ha ha! Thank you. Right forever means gotcha. You're a win. <laughs> well, he won his first tag title. His his first, I should say, his first title ever was the tag title, the All Asia Tag Title, with Tiger Mask. Um, with Tiger Mask two, two, who was actually Misawa. Yeah, in the Tiger Mask, that boy really did it all. Played fucking Tiger Mask. That's crazy. But shortly after they won and who moved the mask, Kobashi and Misawa would vacate the title. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But after that, he kind of bounced between uh, like several different tag teams and he got the belt a couple times, lost the belt a couple times. Kind of just. He won it with Johnny Ace twice. Blip, blip. Johnny Ace, cool guy. Blip, blip. Just bouncing around. But, but then, then, in 1993, 93, he had his first five-star classic. Rumba! That was on July 29th, 1993. Guess what? Our timing is great. Right now, we're recording this on July 28th. Boom! 2019. We're right on the cusp Real close. of that yeah. anniversary. And actually, in Japan, it's the 29th. Boomba! We've done it. Fucking did it without even thinking about it. We did it without even trying, so take that. Congrats, Stan Hansen and Kenta Kobashi on the uh, 26th anniversary <laughs> of <laughs> your first five-star match. I don't know if it's your first one, Stan Hansen. Um, Stanley Hansen, either. It's, it's Kenta's first one, and this would be the first of many five-stars, like 20 yeah. of them. Yeah. And boy, what a match. Yeah. Uh, just real quick, like, this is the one he came out in Danger Zone. I thought it was really, really cool. Yeah. Um, it was really <laughs> funny and I loved it. But, me too. When I was watching this match, one of like the weirdest things about it was I didn't know who the crowd was hot for. Cause it was, it oh, was like they were bouncing right. back and forth. Yeah. They like, cause you'd get boys. like Kobashi chants and then like Stan Hansen would do something cool and they would be like, yeah. And yeah. Then like, it was like, I was like, I don't know who we're hot for right yeah. now. Yeah. I know that Stan Hansen is like, like fucking super huge in Japan because wild. yeah, Boy, I know this, I know this good from, old text. Yeah. I know this from watching like, uh, uh, like Japanese comedy, like Batsu game and stuff. Mm hmm. Like Japanese comedians always reference Stan Hansen. Like they'll have a dude like come out and like like one of their one of their like comedy members like come out in a Stan Hansen That's outfit. That's so cool. <laughs> and they'll and they'll be like, oh, they'll just like start cracking him up, and they'll be like, Stan Hansen, Lariato, yeah, Lariato. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Like I've I've seen that a ton. Like the Japanese people fucking love this guy, and I think that's great. He kind of looks like Hey Man Page's dad. <laughs> he he could be. He even he even carries around the bull rope and stuff. Yeah, right. Like he comes out in like a black vest yeah. and just like his black trunks with like cowboy hat and rope around his neck and it's very similar to old hangman. Stanley Hansen is considered the most successful and popular gaijin in professional wrestling history. Wow, okay. I didn't know he's that popular. Yep. Holy shit. Yeah. Good, Good job, job, Stan Hansen. Yeah, you you done it. And also might I say great fucking wrestler. Yeah, he was trained by Dory Funk, Dory Funk Jr., and Terry Funk. Of course he was trained by Dory Funk Jr. <laughs> Who was God it? damn it. Dory, <laughs> Dory Funk Jr. is the, I'm going to say, okay, here I go. Dory Funk Jr. is the greatest wrestler of all time. Boom. Because he's trained every greatest wrestler of all time. Boom. Everybody. <gasps> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you, I have many... I told you before we recorded, I have many caps lock points in yep. this, in my notes. First one being, I cannot believe this match starts with an out of ring DDT. Yes, Queen. That was fucking wild. Yep. I was, it was so fucking hard, too. Yep. Like, we've talked about it probably not on here, but in, in person, of how much harder Japanese wrestlers hit. Yes. And it's, it's still true. fucking 
terrifies me watching yes. them do things. Yes. Like that DDT, I was like, he's dead. It's over. It's yeah, like, over. Even it's, 20 minute match. It's like, over. Yeah, like when we watched 20 we, minutes of them trying to resuscitate this man. When we watched. We watch like New Japan now. We're like, holy yeah, shit, they yeah. hit so hard. But like watching this, it's like they hit even harder back then. I was like, no, yeah. stop, don't. Even watching like Kenny Omega in AEW now, that dude still hits like a fucking truck. Yeah. And it's really scary. Mm. One of my notes is this whole match hits like a freight train. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I put. Like, I, that was in one of my notes too. Like it, like midway, th- midway through. Also, like I, I told you, I was drinking while I was watching these. A lot of my bullet points watching the matches, like, still haven't seen a burning hammer. <laughs> still haven't seen a burning hammer. I think I wrote that at least eight times throughout all the matches that we did. Oh, boy. Yeah. I think. And then, like, I was like, oh, he's only done it seven times ever. Yeah. We should actually mention that. Kenta Kobashi's, one, well, one of his claim to fame's claims to fame is the burning hammer which is a super fucking cool move and it's like it's like a super finisher i guess you'd call it yeah because he's only used it seven times Uh uh-huh he only started using it like 10 years after he debuted yeah it was the first one was like 98 right 99 um we had we had a list that we're trying trying to watch all of them I can look it up again. But, like, I was reading on Reddit, and they were talking about how it's, like, the most protected finisher of all time because yeah. he's only used it seven times. Yeah, like, he protects it, too. Yeah, yeah. Because he, he, he only he, breaks it out when he needs to. Yeah. And it's just, it's like, what is... Like I told you, it is the most terrifyingly safe move I've ever fucking seen. Yeah, yeah like, I feel like, like, like the first time you see it, you're like, holy shit, is that yeah. guy okay? But then, like, yeah. when you watch it again, like, really I, analyze it, you're like... Oh, this move is really safe. Yeah. I fucking... So, he, the first time he did it was in a tag team match with Shinzaki versus Mis- Misawa and Omori mm. in October 1998 in All Japan Wrestling. Okay. Um, okay. October 24th, if you want to get real technical. <laughs> okay. But the first time I watched that, I like watched it at least four times. And I was like, how is right? he still alive? Yeah. And then like I watched it and I was like, wow he barely touches the mat at all when he slams him down like right? like it's so weird to like to watch because you watch it in, in like um regular time and it looks uh, uh, so scary yeah and then you watch it in like slow motion and like you're like watching it frame by frame and it's like totally different than what it looks like in normal motion yeah i think I think that makes it special too. Yeah. In the fact that he only used it seven times. If he uses it like all the time in every match, then like people are gonna start to notice like, oh, it's not, it's not that dangerous. Like it's a cool move, but like, yeah. oh, it's, it doesn't look like it hits as hard as I thought it did. But since he only used it so sparingly, everybody's like, fuck. Yeah, and also like one of the things that I love love about the burning hammer is most of the time that he does it. He starts them on the top rope, so he doesn't pick them up into oh, the rack. Yeah, yeah. So which is like, I would imagine probably pretty awkward. Yeah. Like he puts them up on the rope and then just kind of like sets them down onto his shoulders. Yeah. And then does the hammer. Yeah. I and like I was that. like, wow, that's like the safe. It's like the safest way you it's, could possibly. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> yeah. He's not even picking them up. Yeah. Really. He's just kind of. He just kind of like leaning them on them to over. him. Yeah. <laughs> and then carries them to the middle, and then breaks their neck in half. <laughs> yeah kills com- them compresses their skulls into their spines <laughs> yeah and, <laughs> and then they're dead that's why he's only allowed to use it seven times yeah because he killed seven people yeah including kenta who died and never wrestled for wwe ever <laughs> and is not currently wrestling for new japan pro wrestling either everybody he <laughs> did, died did, did he do it oh he did do it to kenta yeah his last one yeah. was to kenta yeah. what a what a fucking honor kenta kenta Burning hammered the last time to Kenta. Man. Dang. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That should go on his resume. March 2006 was the last one ever wow. to be done. Anyway, he didn't do it on this match. Nope. That was or, definitely in my notes a bunch of times too. Yep. <laughs> or or uh, or his last match. <laughs> Seven kind of minutes in. Still no burning hammer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was kinda I thought that they would do it in the last one. But then, like, I thought about it, and I was like, uh, maybe not. 
I guess think... he's like you'd be like what forty six at that point. Yeah, he's forty six. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, yeah maybe, but, but maybe, maybe it was also to still protect it. Yeah, to show like he didn't need to use it in that match, dude. Yeah, he didn't. He, he didn't need to burn no hammers. He just needed even a though salt. I thought for sure he was gonna do it because. The name of the the, the whole oh, show was the was the final burning. Final burning. And I was like, yeah. this has got to be it. Yeah. But yeah, it didn't happen. Anyway, I'm I'm kind of glad. It didn't. Yeah. We'll get to that. Mm-hmm. Everybody, mm-hmm. hold your horses. Stan Hansen's slaps when he does those like full arm swing face slaps yeah. are fucking insane. Yeah. Like he he hits Kobashi, I think like three times. It's like, Three or four, yeah. And that, that boy's just getting rocked side to side. I was like, Jesus Christ, yeah. stop. And, man, th- like, this match is so good. Yeah. It, <laughs> I mean, it hits on, like, all points. Yeah. And, like, fucking, I can't believe this was only five years after Kenta Kobashi started wrestling mm-hmm. or made his debut, rather. Yeah. Like, in just five years, he put on this, this fucking insane match. Because, like, I think Ric Flair's first five-star was, like, 15 years after he started. Yeah, it was something like that. Oh, but Kenta, that boy don't waste no goddamn time. He's a master champion. Yeah, and, like, fucking hell. Um, something else I noticed, uh, Kenta was... Really had the upper hand most of the time. That was definitely one right? of my notes. It was like yeah. all fucking Kobashi this whole fucking match. Yeah. I was like, Stan Hansen has gotten like four minutes of time I, as like the... So I thought that was really smart because Stan Hansen clearly supposed to be the heel of the match. Like from the get-go because he throws Kobashi out, DDTs him yeah, on the outside. Him on the right? outside. Super, Super heel move. Everybody's like, oh, fuck this guy. Yeah. But then he just gets his ass beat the whole time. Yeah. Right? And everybody's <laughs> like, oh, man, maybe, I, maybe I, I'm feeling bad for Stan Hansen right now. So I feel like they did that on purpose to get people sort of more on the side of Stan Hansen for a bit. Maybe. Which could be why they, they were kind of split, like the crowd was. Mm-hmm. Until, like, near the very end, Stan Hansen did some super heel shit again. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, wait, this guy's a bad guy. I said, oh, wait, wait, we don't like this guy. Kobashi, Kobashi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I really, I I really feel like that was their intention. And if it was, it was really smart. They did it. I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. They did it really well. But let's get back to how hard they hit. Kenta Kobashi's chops on Stan (sighs) Hansen's chest. Okay, here's here's exactly what I wrote. I wrote, Hansen slaps. Jesus. (laughs) Then my next my next bullet point is, but Kenta's chops, Jesus. <laughs> that that was like one thing I I noticed about all of um, Kobashi's chops is like they almost look high, like he's hitting them in the throat. Yeah, yeah, it's like, and it's not, it's not so much like, because like when you do like the overhand chop, it's like it's like a slap, right? Yeah, like on your like your pec. Uh huh. But Kenta, when he does like those those like knife edge yeah, chops, yeah, he does like like judo it, chops. It looks like he's like like straight up like like yeah, slicing your yeah. chest and your neck open with his fucking hand. And that was another thing that I noticed too is like you watch WWE guys, you watch them do like the Ric Flair woo it slaps, and mm. their chest gets super red because it's like yeah. oh look how hard he hits. But like you watch Kenta matches. And their whole chest isn't red. It's just a line of red across the like, Yeah, right? Throat. It's, like, very, like, specific. Yeah. Like, right there. And, like, that shit. I, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. I, so I good. I don't even know what else to say other than Jesus. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, he... Man. He, like, charges them. He, like, powers them. Like, yeah. holds them up like this and charges it up and... Uh, smack! Yeah, he fucking kills him. Yeah. And then, but then it's the third time someone's died in this match. <laughs> but then fucking Stan Hansen lariats him into the fucking next dimension. Like, Dude, holy shit! Stan Hansen's lariats are thing of legend, man. Yeah, yeah. like that guy <laughs> fucks you yeah. with his whole arm. Just he fucks you with his whole arm. Yeah, he buries his arm into your chest, <laughs> and you become one for a brief second. Dude, for- 
<laughs> for a solid three seconds, you and Stan Hansen become one entity. Yeah. And then you realize, oh, wow, I'm in a wrestling match and you're on the ground. Yeah. And then Stan Hansen chooses to eject your body off of his arm <laughs> yeah. and into the mat. He chooses to. Yeah, he's like, Get the fuck off my arm. <laughs> I'm done with this reunion. <laughs> Get off of me. Uh, um. However, what, not however. That's not what I want to say. Mm-hmm. Furthermore, furthermore, <laughs> I think I think this this talk, talking more from uh, from storyline and character standpoint here. There are still really highlighting Kenta's like unwavering spirit because like this whole match he's just going hard on Stan Hansen and they're really putting over like Stan Hansen as this dude who just will not go down yeah who, who will not give up but also it's putting over Kenta as a dude who will not give up yeah on like beating this fucking white dude in the submission <laughs> like one thing I like a, a really cool thing that I liked about um I guess the character of Kenta Kobashi was um, his, 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 the not give up attitude thing that they played on w- while he was still a face. Right. Which, I mean, you see like a lot of face matches in WCW, WWF, WWE things. Um, when they're, when they can't win, they do the, the what am I supposed to do? Thing. Oh. And like Kenta never does that. He just like, yeah. he like tries to pin him. Nope, didn't work. Okay, on to the next thing. He's, there's yeah, no, he just keeps going no, and like, going and going. Yeah, there's no moment of him going like, well, I don't know what to do. It's always like I always have a plan. I can't yeah. stop. Yeah, when he like when he when he fails a pain, he's like motherfucker, and he just like picks yeah. it back up and keeps just going. Keeps going, yeah. I, I thought that was like a really cool. Yeah, I love the character choice. If that was a character choice, or if it was just how I, Kenta wrestled, I don't know. But maybe no, either I've, way, probably maybe a little bit of both. Yeah, it was. Just, I thought that was like a really cool thing that he just like it was just nonstop. Yeah, he, and it's train doesn't stop at this station <laughs> and it's it's it was uh interesting to see that and to think about the start of his career and his 63 losses yeah and like because yeah. they were like after those 63 losses it's not like he went on a winning streak he lost a whole bunch more in between that and this yeah right? do, do you think like they were like talking about his character and giant baba's like you are going to lose 63 matches in a row and like he was just like okay <laughs> yeah, probably like fucking listen to Giant Baba. That boy knows who he's yeah. talking about. He's probably like, oh, at first, first he probably in his mind he's like, what the fuck, bro? 60, I just sixty three. Fucking... And then Giant Baba's like, don't worry, it only lasts like one year. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this like Italian accent. <laughs> Bibbidi <Bibbidi-bobbidi. laughs> Um But yeah, it was interesting to think, to consider those during this match, right? To consider yeah. like all those losses he had to endure and like all that shit he had to go through to get to this point, to get to this fucking dude. Who's like at the top, top of the yeah. fucking wrestling tier in Japan at the time. And he, and he's like, I need to fucking win. I got to get this win. And it wasn't even for like a championship or anything. Yeah, it was just, too. just, just a match. Regular, regular old just singles. For fucking bragging rights. Just be like, I beat Stanley Hansen. Um, or I lost to Stanley yeah, Hansen. Yeah. The other, Stanley Hansen said, I beat Ken Tabashi. <laughs> the other thing I noticed, uh, both of them do a great job making this match look like a fucking battle. Yeah. Like, like both of them, every time there's like a failed pinfall attempt, they they both just get back up like, fucking let's go. Fucking come on, let's keep trying. Like Even though Stan Hansen was just getting his dick slammed into the dirt <laughs> yeah. for a long time. He still got up every time. He's like, I'm ready for more. Come on. He's like, I ain't done yet, boy. Yeah. Well, I'm from Texas. Texas going, ain't going down quiet. Yeah, and I I think... Okay, so... I, but I'm to, ma, ma, ma. Mm-hmm. My favorite part, <laughs> I think my favorite part of this match was at the end because Kenta was just trying fucking everything he was like pulling out from the very bottom of his bag like every different weird roll up he could think of he's like okay, i love about- that right yeah he's like okay how about this one yeah nope. how about this one I, what the fuck I how about this one fucking love that right like all these different kinds of maneuvers he was trying it it, it was really so technical yeah and it was showing like a real kind of like like desperation i yeah. feel like because it was at the end and they're both all like fucked up and he's like what, he, do, I, he literally, what do i gotta fucking do it was like six or seven just different yeah. different roll-ups in yeah, a row. yeah 
And I was like, wow. Yeah, and and ultimately he fucking lost. Yep. Which is... Larry it off the top rope. Yeah, which was hard. Did not see that um, coming. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, but it was... Especially, like... In this match, Kenta Kobashi does the most beautiful moonsault in the history of oh, moonsaults yeah. ever. Man, Kenta's like, got a great moonsault. His man. form, like, the only one I've ever seen better was Charlotte fucking Flair. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the only, like, it was the it was a, it was beautiful. It was like graceful mm. and impactful. Yeah, and, like that it was like watching an Olympic diver. That moonsault hit fucking hard. Dude. Yeah. It was like watching an Olympic diver when they like go into the water and it's just like a little like droplet comes out. Yeah. It was like, like, wow, I just saw God for the first time. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, he's, he's like flipping up in the air and it goes in slow motion and he's like twinkling. You're like, whoa. And then he, (gasps) yeah, it it was amazing. I loved it. And like, even we'll talk about that match after. (laughs) (laughs) Oh yeah, yeah. 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 But, like, yeah. watching him do that moonsault, I was just like, holy shit. It was, like, the perfect moon shape. Yeah, yeah. right. A perfect, like, big arch yeah. and, and the slammy dammy. Yeah. Slam down that handsome man. That was, that was probably my favorite part was that moonsault just because it was so good. It was a, it was a picture perfect. Yeah. As they say in the biz. The yeah. picture biz. If Jim Ross was calling that, he'd say... Well, wow, that was a slobber knocker. <laughs> He's like, oh God. My oh God, you broke him in half. <laughs> Call out the match. Kendra Kobashi has broken Stan Hansen in half with a moose hole. <laughs> <laughs> with a moose hole. <laughs> with a moose hole. <sighs> but yeah, yeah, real good match. Kent Kent loses at the end. Fucking. Like, I, I, and like the Lariat didn't really seem that hard, which is why I was like, Kind of. Oh, yeah, the off the top rope one. It, yeah. yeah, it certainly wasn't as hard as that first Larry. He yeah. Did. But it's it's still hard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just in comparison to the rest. And that could be what it was, too, because like, I watched it and I was like, well, that didn't seem very hard. I don't, yeah. I don't know. I had the same thought. But it's probably yeah. just because you're comparing it to the rest. Yeah. But. Maybe that works in its favor because they're so like tired at the end. And yeah. He's like, I couldn't quite get it, but I still won. <laughs> yeah. And he grabs his bull rope and his vest and he walks away. Yeah. That's probably my favorite match we've watched for the show so far. Yeah. It was really good. I loved it. Like a fucking, like on it. I don't know why, but I couldn't believe how good it was. Like I was like, wow, it was that good. Holy shit. Yeah. And I was, so I, I watched this on a bus at like 3 a.m. And I was like, I was so tired before watching it. But like while I was watching, I was like, oh, shit. I was like getting really into it. Yeah. And like, and like internally, like wanting to like jump up and be like, yeah, fuck it, go, go. But I couldn't. So I was on a bus. Yeah, I was, I was playing like Bloodborne in between like, like videos. And I remember this match started. And everything was going on, and I looked up the screen, and it was like, "You've died." And like one of my notes was, "Died in Bloodborne." <laughs> <laughs> good note. It, it killed me. It was so good that it killed me in Bloodborne. Worth. Yeah. So, so good, good it could kill you in real life too. Yeah. Almost, almost did. Died three times watching match. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it was good. Me too. Everything about it. Five so the, stars. The other interesting thing is that Kenta wouldn't defeat Stan Hansen for another year after this. Wow. Um, yeah, right? They wrestled like a couple times on and off. Just couldn't do it. Couldn't beat him. Couldn't do it until 1994. Um, and again, it wasn't even for a belt or anything. It was just for the prominence of saying he'd beat Stan Hansen finally. Yeah, and like back to Stan Hansen being so over in Japan. Even after mm-hmm. he won, everybody like was like, yeah, Stan Hansen. Yeah. Everybody... And like nobody was upset. Yeah. There wasn't like a moment that everybody was kind of like, well, our boy lost. It was yeah. kind of just like, wow, fucking cool. Yeah, problem. It was just so good. Yeah, for both both of those boys. One of my notes for this match too was big streamer mess. Oh, because yeah. they had like a thousand fucking streamers they yeah. threw into the ring when they were standing there introducing him. Man, I love that. <laughs> I'll never get tired of streamers. Yeah, I just thought I was so like, good. I was like, wow. 
They, yeah, I mean, people were hot for this match. I, and is I that, wonder is that like something they do in Japan? Like a match yeah. they're really excited for? They'll throw like the streamer thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, you, I think you probably noticed in the in his last match, mm-hmm. of fucking streamer city. Yeah. Um, at the beginning and the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the thing, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I wonder like where this match was on the card for like this show. If this was the headliner or oh, like. Yeah. Or like middle mid card. I, I can't imagine it was a mid card, but maybe like co main event like kind of thing. Co main event or like yeah, the one like before the headliner or something. Um, I was wondering about that, but probably not because they probably put the like the title match as the main event. Yeah, whatever that title match would have been. Um, because man, if the fucking crowd was all in on this one, maybe. yeah. Woo! I wonder what the main event was. Had been fucking. Uh, giant Baba against Andre the Giant. That sounds like it would have been bad. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, no offense to them. But like on, on paper, it sound real good. But yeah, the, the, you can't have big two slow yeah. big. I was like, but the reality boys. is two giant dudes. Oh yeah, because they wouldn't be able to do any slam. Come on and slam, and welcome to the jam. Slam, jam. Slam Jam. Slim, Slim Jim. Slam Jim Slim Jim. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then, um, <laughs> interestingly enough, Kenta's still kind of just remained in the tag scene for a while. Um, and he had no no other big single championship wins until 1996. He got his first Triple Crown Championship. He and Stan Hansen. Sorry, just I was trying to see if I could find the oh. fight card, and I found it. They, um, in on September fifth, in nineteen eighty six, they wrestled again. It's also another five star match. And they said like this one like in the thing, it's like sheer violence and brutality that they like Whoa. it was supposed to be known for. And Hansen was forty seven, and they're like, "There's no way this man was forty seven in this match because he did not move or act like a forty seven year old man." Whoa! Yeah, I was like, he was, he was older in that match than Kenta was when he retired. Yep. Holy shit! Yeah, it was like performing as well as he ever did, not needing to be carried by his younger foe. Wow! Man, yeah, he's forty. Wait, 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 wait! And that was in ninety six. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so Dude, he was, so... was forty four. Yeah, ninety in... three. Holy shit! Yeah. Whoa! Did not think that was a thing. Man, yeah, I would have clocked him for like thirty-five. Yeah, definitely older than Kabashi, but not wow. like like middle-aged yeah. man. Yeah, forty-four. Yeah, holy Jesus! This, Wild. This boy put on multiple five-star matches in his forties. Yeah, at least two. Hello, AJ Styles. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> I mean, I guess he's got like eight years left in yeah. his forties. Whatever, AJ. I yeah. Give a fuck. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I guess. But I don't, I don't know how many, how many five stars does AJ have left, though. You know. I don't know. I hope a lot. I mean, <laughs> his matches with Ricochet are really fun, but I don't know if they're five stars. Yeah, I mean, hard to get five stars in WWE, though. Am I right? Vince. Hey, man. Since Paul Heyman and Eric Bischoff took over, WWE has actually been entertaining again. Don't watch it anymore. I'm too smarky for that. Also, I only watch AEW now. Also, the thing that they're doing with Bray Wyatt, I'm really fucking on. I'm fucking over for it. Side note, I'm over as hell on the Firefly Funhouse. Holy shit, I love it. <laughs> Dude, have you seen The Fiend? Yeah. Oh, God. I love Bray Wyatt so much, dude, all the time. Even then, more like, now. And like the thing they're doing with, um, what's his name? Real skinny Irish guy, real buff, real strong. Oh, uh, 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 uh Seamus? No, smaller guy. Oh, the b- 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 the demon Finn Balor. Finn Balor. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we not remember that guy's name? We're I fucking asses. love Finn Balor. Um, but like. They have a match at SummerSlam, and we did you see the? This is really really off topic, but did you see the? Yeah, we're going off the the promo for him accepting the match. No, it's fuck terrifying. Oh, it's so good. It's like Bray Wyatt in the in the in the funhouse, and he's like talking. And he's like, "We accept your match." 
yeah, we're going to do it. And then like, you know, the little puppets are like, yeah. Yay! yeah. And then he's like talking about it. He's like, but I should tell you the fiend is all these scary things. And he's like, let me in. And then, and then it cuts to like the fiend, like jumping around, dancing and laughing and stuff. And then it ends in like super like demonic voice. And he's like, let me in. That's cool. Yeah, it's. I'm like, Whoa. dude, I'm fucking, I'm in it. I'm okay. in. I'm all in. Let's I do it. I guess I'll watch SummerSlam. Fucking yeah. hell. Side anyway. note. Bray, other side, side, side note. Bray Wyatt is what got me into wrestling, basically. Really? At least what got me into watching WWE. Huh. Like current WWE. Because uh, our pal, Rudy, had started watching again around the time when Bray Wyatt was getting popular. After he came over from NXT and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he was telling me about his character. And I was like... That sounds really fucking cool. Yeah. I need to watch that. Yeah, Bray Wyatt's character has always been really good. Yeah. But this is one I feel like he's going to have to fucking protect the shit out of this character. I hope he does. Because if he lets it fall, it's... He'll get I don't know if, again. <laughs> man, I don't know if it'll be on him or if it would be on WWE. Probably. Because, well, I feel like it was on WWE that he didn't get... That his previous character failed at the end. They try to give him all this goofy dumb shit yeah and, and i don't know kento gobashi was a great wrestler though and so is stan hansen both of them are five star bros yeah here's okay <laughs> i mean this is not as much of a side note as us talking about bray wyatt just now but <laughs> small side note on um i believe No. Okay. It was either and you can you can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if you know this fact or not even. But it was either on Kenta's last match or on Misawa's tribute show after he died. Stan Hansen like came in via video and he's he's like really old by that point, right? He's like he's like in his pushing seventy probably. Or something, yeah. He's he's, he's pushing, that pushing was what, seventy. Like Ten years ago, yeah. Um, he he like they you know like all these wrestlers came out and like talked about him. I'm pretty sure his Misa was tribute. Yeah, because his his last match, there was no like video. Yeah, thing. it was right. all like a bunch of wrestlers came down after, but but yeah, and they had Stan Hansen come in via video and like and like say some like really great stuff about Misa. Very. That's- very touching like the crowd was like holy shit stan hansen like wow this guy's old yeah whoa this guy's super crazy famous oh my god it's stan hansen <laughs> oh my so, god it's a video of stan hansen i was gonna look up how many five-star matches stan hansen has mm. and i typed in how many five-star matches does and it's like johnny gargano have will osprey have kenny omega wwe <laughs> john cena oh <laughs> john cena has zero really i don't know probably uh, honestly probably Maybe like one. Stan Hansen, I'm going to guess he has 12. Is that too many? How many does Kenta have? I don't know. A hundred? <laughs> too many. Probably. He has not enough. Yes. Every Kenta Gobashi match should be five stars because he is a fucking treasure. So, fun fact. The match, Stan Hansen... I had mm. with Kenta Kobashi. It was mm. Kenta Kobashi's first five star. Mm. Also, Stan Hansen's first five star. Oh, I'm so proud of both of them. I love those guys. Wow. Dan, Stan Hansen, we need to do an episode on you one day. You're great. Yeah. <laughs> I never, I never thought this, this like goofy cowboy gimmick guy, would be like, so fucking good. But goddamn, is he good? And, like, you don't expect it from him, too, because he comes out, he's just, like, some, like, big burly white man. Like he's, mm-hmm. he's not even, like, muscly or, like, he, he like, at first glance, he just looks kind of fat. Yeah, he, he's kind of, he's got that weird, like, I don't know, like, the just, like, the big guy build. Yeah, like, yeah. They're, like, they're really strong, but they look fat kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. But then he goes in and he's, oh, fuck you, I'm the best wrestler. Found the fight card. It. Oh, I'm the greatest. Tell me it was at it. All Japan Pro Wrestling Budokan Hall Show, July 1993. Yes, they sir. were eighth match out of nine matches total. Oh, the title it. match between Mitsuharu Mitsuharu Misawa versus Toshiaki Kawada. 
Oh, for dang. the triple crown title. That's probably a hot match. Kawada, Kawada and a quarter stars, according to this. Cool. Oh, wow. oh wow, they did less mm-hmm. than Stan and Kenta. Damn, look at our boys. It was twenty five minutes long. That's and Musawa defeated Kawada via pinfall. Kawada, I think, is like the other like top wrestler of like the top three Japanese wrestlers of all time. Like in in reading about Kenta Kobashi, it's like always like Kenta, Misawa, and Kawada. It's like, like the, 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 like the always triple crown. those three. <laughs> yeah. The oh dude, they're like the Mount Rushmore of Japanese wrestle. Perfect. And there's only three. No fourth guy. No, there's Tanahashi. No yeah, get out of here, Tanny boy. Welcome to Kara. <laughs> Not you either. Yeah. Well, maybe could be. Uh, it probably would be Okada. I'll bet. Do you think it'd be Okada over Tanahashi though? No, it would yeah. be. It wouldn't. It, it wouldn't would be, be Tana. No, it wouldn't be either of them because it'd be Will Osprey. <laughs> That's a weird choice, but okay. <laughs> so, wait, who would it be? Probably Antonio Inoki. He's oh. the guy that started New Japan, and he's he's probably like again he's a dude I know absolutely nothing about other than that he's super famous in Japan he had big old chin Japanese media like to always talk about his chin <laughs> um, nice he's probably like he might be more well known than Kenta Kobashi maybe well maybe not anymore because Kenta was more recent Yeah, but like in like the 80s and 90s I would say Antonio Noki was more well known he was like, like actually the Hulk Hogan of Japan, because I hear he was super uh, stubborn on losing, uh, and like he always wanted to be the winner and was kind of like a dickhead about it. Gotcha. So he's very Hulk Hoganish, hmm. you know. Giant Baba wrestled in this card too. Oh, JBB, G- <laughs> GBB, GBB. It was a six-man tag that he was in. Oh, nice job, GBB. Yeah. Anyway, everybody, <laughs> in, in 1996, he got his, Kenta Kobashi got his first championship, the Triple Crown Championship of AJP, AJWPW, AJ Wrestling, AJ Styles Pro Wrestling. <laughs> and that was, I believe that's the main belt. Uh, he did it. He got the big boy. But this sparked classic rivalry that we were talking about between Kawada, Misawa, and our boy Kenta. Kenta. And they were kind of going at it. The three of them trading that belt. Boom bop, boom bop, bop, boom bop, bop, back and forth. Had a little, had a little <laughs> wrestling love triangle. Those boys. And uh, after the after Kenta lost it, he recaptured it in 1998. But at a boy. That same year, he had a career-threatening knee injury. Oh, no. Kenta had had uh, knee problems before that, had some injuries. But he's, he's like, no, I can't I can't take any time off. This is the hottest time of my career. I'm yeah, wrestling. Yeah, he's like, he's the man. I'm like, I'm one of the top three wrestlers in the world right now. Like, I cannot stop. I cannot stop this momentum. Foolish. Because in that year, like I said, it was, it was career-threatening. He had another knee injury. Like, he was probably might not even be able to walk again if he kept wrestling on that knee. So he finally was like, fine, I will lose my championship to Misawa on, it's on Halloween of 98. The big Halloween bash. Yep. And then he, (laughs) he had to take, take a little bit, a little bit of time off, I think. Um, but went back to being the tag champ in 99 with I believe with Johnny Ace again and he also went into a singles feud with our boy Vader I love Vader we'll do an episode on Vader he won it with Akiyama in December of 1989 okay just kidding Johnny Ace is a good guy though (laughs) (laughs) he had he had a feud with Vader Vader had the triple crown championship which is crazy to think about right I love that fact yeah and I really want to see Vader with that big gold belt. But Kenta managed to win it back in 2000 from old Vader, boy. Um, but in that same year, 
Misawa left All Japan to form his own promotion called Pro Wrestling Noah. And he was like, bros, come on over here with me. It's better. Yeah. Jump ship. We're the, we're the AEW of Japan right now. Yeah, Kobayashi along with all but three All Japan native workers followed yeah. Misawa. Which is wild to think about. To everybody but three of the original boys. Yeah, and he was... Kobashi had the Triple Crown title at the time. And yeah. And he vacated he's the title fucking to, vacated it. to go wrestle with his boy. He said, fuck this title. Yeah. But his knee injuries were getting worse. He done got... When he went over. Oh, no. And he was like, fine. I'll take 13 months off. <laughs> and that was at the end of 2000. So he basically took all of 2001 oh, off. Which is wild. Like, he just jumped ship to this brand new promotion. He's like, ah, sorry. He, wow. So, he wrestled Akiyama on the second show of, like, a, a tournament thing that they were doing. Oh, yeah. And Kobashi legitimately passed out while being captured in Akiyama's King Crab Lock session. Oh, and was unable yeah. to finish the match. Yeah, I think that's kind of what, like, sparked him to be like, fine, I'll, I'll yeah. fucking take time off. Yeah, dude, you passed out. Like probably like pain, I would assume. Yeah, yeah, probably or like maybe like some nerve thing. Yeah, because like in his knee finally deteriorated to the point he could no longer walk, no longer work through the pain. He was forced to take thirteen months off. Yeah, like yeah. you said, multiple uh, knee surgeries. Yeah, Jesus, like, fucking that sucks. But maybe you should have taken care of it more earlier on, so you didn't have to take thirteen yeah. months off. Yeah, yeah. Just saying, Kenta. Hindsight's twenty twenty, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. The thing is, it's gotta be really fucking hard to try to take time off when you're like the king of the mountain, like, know, and you right? just got there. Yeah, and you're the king of the mountain in this brand new promotion. Yeah. Like, you're one of your like best friends is probably like counting on you to help bring up this promotion. You're like, yep. Oh, bro, fuck my knee. <laughs> I'm dying. But I can't walk. I am dying, literally. It's fine. We'll just wheelchair you down to the ring. Just fuck. get in there and wrestle. I <laughs> you don't have to walk to wrestle. Can I do all arm work? Yeah. <laughs> I'll do Cobra just Clutch forever. Yeah. <laughs> well, he returned in February 2002, but his knees gave out again and he had another five months out. So it's like almost two years now. Yeah, seriously, like of, of your knee problem. When all, probably could all they, together. Ah, man, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe he did work on it earlier. It would have been just as bad. It would have taken just as long. Maybe there wasn't. Like uh, a, yeah, maybe. Well, yeah, could have been. Yeah, maybe, who maybe, knows? maybe that's why he didn't. They were like, eh, "It's going to be, you know, about to do a bunch of surgeries. You're going to have to take like a year off." And he was like, "Like, well, I can't." Yeah. Yeah, he just worked through it until he was, like, literally forced to do it yeah. or lose the ability to walk forever. Yeah, I wonder, if I wonder like, man, that's that's got to be a thing that you'd have to ask him. Yeah, right. Yeah, like, you have to, like, be what like, were hey, the circumstances? so why didn't you get it fixed yeah, when it what, first happened? What, what did the doctors tell you, my friend? My friend, Kenta. We we're, we're on a first friends. name basis. Yeah. Kenta, sir. Yeah. Tell us now. Call Kenta us now. Senpai. <laughs> Kenta Senpai. I would call him Kenta Sama. Yeah. That means like God Kenta. He's not <laughs> fucking God. It's true. No, wait. No, I guess that'd be like Master Kenta. Same. Well, same shit. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, on March 1st, 2003. He defeated Misawa for the championship, the NOAA championship, the GHC, I think it was. GHC Heavyweight yep. Championship. That's right, baby. Um, And he fucking had that belt for over two years. That's because he is Master Kobashi. Man, what an Asuka this guy is. What an Asuka. <laughs> hey. Ah, thank you, Asuka. And... And, and it was then, it was only then, this was crazy for me to think about. It was only then that he started to go wrestle in, like, the United States and, like, other parts of the world. Like, up until then, he only wrestled in Japan. Which, wow. Is, yeah, right? He had wrestled for, like, 15 years at that point. <laughs> His first appearance in North America was Harley Race's World League Wrestling Promotion. That's a weird thing to think about. Where he 
defeated the then World League Wrestling Champion, Wild Wade Chism. Chism. Chism? Chism. Mm. Chism. Yeah. Boy, that guy's got something too. First first Kenta Kobashi American loss. And then his second and third North American appearances were for Ring of Honor, where he defeated Samoa Joe. Man. In memorable matches, given a full five stars by Wrestling Observer in the Match of the Year for award for 2005. Samoa Joe. That's fucking crazy to think about. Samoa Joe wrestled Kenta Kobashi. Samoa and Joe. Was, it was a five star match and Match of the Year in 2005. Yeah. And not, not only that, it was a singles match. Yeah. Samoa Joe and Kenta Kobashi. And fuck, man. Samoa Joseph. And now God damn. he's in WWE. What's he doing now? Mm. He's not even yelling at AJ Styles anymore. Yeah, like I don't even. I don't even know what he's doing. Isn't he yelling at Kofi? No. No, oh, maybe that little thing. Yeah, but he... for a bit. But then nothing happened. Yeah, they wrestled. I think. I think briefly. I think Randall Orton is uh, wrestling oh. for um against um. No. Kofi. Don't. Who's the other champion now? Oh, Brock. Yeah, that's right. Boring oh. ass fucking shitty dumb. Oh, yeah. It's like Brock and Seth feud. Huh? Yeah. Again. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Who oh, no, this one? Leave before. us alone. <laughs> well, <laughs> sad news, everybody. On June 4, 2006, Kenta Kobashi had to leave due to the fact that he had contracted cancer. And everybody's like, oh, no, but you're the best guy. Mm-hmm. But then in a, in a fucking... After winning the GHC Tag Team Championship belt, and oh, yeah. his partner, Taman Honda, had to return the belt yeah. on September 26th. That's so sad. But, but it wasn't that long. He wasn't out too long. He's out for like a year and a half. He came back on December love... 2nd, 2007. Yeah, I love like on, but like before he like left, left on December 10th at the Nippon uh, Budokan. He came and it was like he announced that he would return oh, yeah. without fail. Yeah, he's man, that's fucking that's yeah. cool. That's a Kenta thing. Yeah. He fucking Oh man, Kenta's like the underdog of all underdogs, and now he's underdog in that cancer. He's like, No, I'm gonna use my, my fucking burning spirit yeah. to beat this shit and everybody's like, Kobashi, Kobashi. I, Well they probably were. I didn't watch that. Kobashi. But when he came back, they were fucking Kobashi and the pot he got was incredible. That's probably like the loudest wrestling crowd I've ever heard. Dude, it was fucking wild. Like the first two guys that came out, because I think he was third or fourth, but the first few guys that came out, they were like, yeah, woo wrestlers. And then like, yeah. they were like, he was like, Kobashi Kanta. And then everyone's like, fucking, I can only imagine being in that building yeah. at that time, especially because the Budokan is fucking huge. It seats like yeah. 10,000 people or something. And like, ma, could you fucking? What I I said, ma, <laughs> could you imagine being in that shit, dude? And you're like screaming to you, just like, call my shit. Yeah, man, fucking that. Yeah, like that video is wild. That's like one of the most moving like wrestling videos yeah. of all time. Just to hear like all those fucking people yeah, screaming for this one dude, and then he comes out. He's got his man. Kent is so cool. He he come, always comes out with like his hood up and he and like gets in the ring. He just like looks out over everybody, just like with this like stoicism. Like yeah, guys, we fucking did it. And he's like, yeah, I'm here. And everybody's like, fuck yeah, you are. <laughs> it's definitely not that kind of attitude though. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah, it's like you like you can tell like inside he's like, I'm with you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I fucking did it. We fucking we did this together, guys. You're my my best babies. I almost just started singing the My Little Pony movie song. <laughs> when you say we did this together. We did this together. That's not I'm no. sorry. I don't know it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I've only seen the movie like thirty two times, so it's fine. I'm sorry. It's Guess more than that anyway. Two years later though, <laughs> on my birthday in two thousand nine. He had a serious injury, and he was out for 19 months. In a three-way match against Honda and Kikuchi. This this time it was uh, nerve damage in his shoulders, right? Uh, his right arm. Oh, his just his arm in general? That's just a, yeah, I don't know. Just his, yeah. uh, with nerve damage in his right arm. Yeah, this is real serious. He's out for 19 months. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Almost two years. This goes back to 
Japanese wrestlers hit way fucking harder than Dude, anybody yeah. in the world. His, his right arm, that's his chopping arm. Yeah. That's his lariat arm. Yeah. Like, I don't think we've talked about it much, but Kenta's lariat's fucking crazy, too. Yeah. Not as, we got, not we as got crazy two, as Stan Hansen. We got but, too caught up on but Stanley he, Hansen. He's got one. Yeah. Like, I feel like all of, like, Kenta's signature moves, half of them are just his right arm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like his chops, his, like, flurry of chop blows. <laughs> and then he has, like, a lariat, and then he has, like, like the moonsault and then the burning hammer, right? Yeah, so like those first three, that's just his right arm yeah. just fucking. What is the thing that he yells before he does his really fast chops? Do you know? Oh, I don't know. I know in the last match, that dude he did it on that fucking masked guy. Yeah, he, Moon Knight. He he just called out. <laughs> yeah, he just called out his name. Oh, is that what he said? So, yeah. so maybe it's just maybe he just like says their name. Kobashi! And I'm like, man, I fucking love it because then like he pauses and everybody's like, oh, he's tired, but then he just goes, ah! yeah, and he just goes for it harder. <laughs> that was like so when good. he like screams. Yeah. Oh man, that shit's good. Uh, anyway, he came back. <laughs> he came back July twenty third, two thousand eleven. Yep, his teaming be, with Go Shiozaki. Yeah, which would be his final return, I guess. Because um, in December 3rd, 2012, he and the other like higher-ups at NOAA, I guess, had been having kind of a falling out, had been button heads a little bit, and he was, he was going to leave NOAA initially. Um, or they were, no, I think they were going to kick him out. They were going to force him to leave NOAA. Um, but they negotiated, and he negotiated that he was going to have his retirement match at NOAA instead of just straight up leaving. Mm. Um, so they, they announced his retirement match in December, and he had his final match. Final! Fi- <clears throat> final! Burning! <laughs> on May 11, 2013. Really Thank you very much. Well done. Yeah! I like, I just want to touch on this real quick on august 27 2011 he debuted a new ring gear which was black and orange and it was mm, kind of mm. like whoa cool but the show is what i want to talk about it was new japan all japan and noah and they called the show all together at the budokan hall oh that's I was right like, dang that's a really cool show yeah that's a where cool show. all of the japanese promotions got together and they're like all together baby <laughs> that was in 2011 yep dang that was i bet tanahashi was there uh, they don't mention no Fuck, Tanahashi. Come on, man, Tanahashi. But I, I mean, God it. damn it! Oh, look at the show, and we'll find I out don't, who was on it. Doesn't matter. It matters to me now. Kento Kobashi wrestled his last match in 2013 on May 11th. It was real good match. Yep, final burning. They Joshin put on Thunder Liger was on the card. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. For he that all together, six man tag match. That's good. With Funaki and <gasps> Funaki Takuma Sano, they beat Atsushi Aoki, Minoru Suzuki, and oh. Taichi. Oh, Taichi, he's goofy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they put on a whole special show just for Kenta Kobashi. Tanahashi was in this altogether thing. You want to know who else was in it? Who? Shinsuke Nakamura. Yes, of course he was. The headline match was Go Shiyazaki, Hiroshi Tanahashi, and Suwama against Kenso, Shinsuke, and Takashi Sugiro. Sugura. Wow. Sugiru. I, I, I only know that. three of those guys. But Tanahashi's team won. Good. But that's... Thank you, Tana. Man, I would love to see Shinsuke Tanahashi now. I think it'd be fun. Oh, that'd be so cool. Yeah. Oh, please. Yeah. <laughs> Can we? Can Shinsuke go back? I mean, I'm sure he could. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't want to, though. No. He likes living in Florida and surfing all the time. Well, it's got to be good. Yeah. Kenta Kobashi had his final match called Final Burning. It was real cool. And then, like I said earlier, I was expecting to see uh, Burning Hammer and... At this point, I still have not seen one because I never watched any videos yep. on it. I just know yep. that you guys talked about it a lot and yep. how cool it was. Yep. And I've never seen no Burning Hammer, never. Yep. And I was like, this is a match. I'm going to see my first Burn Hammer you slam. 
And it didn't happen. Spoiler alert. Yep. Not he even did, almost. He didn't no, he didn't have to because he won with a full team moonsault. Like yep. four moonsaults in a row on this poor guy. Well, they all did like different finishers. Like the one guy did like his oh, like, I guess, like, the, the knee slam thing. Yeah, I, I guess. guess it was just KG Muto and him did a yeah. moonsault. But yeah, no burning hammer. Still very pretty moonsault though. Yep. Dude is 44? 44. 44. And his moonsaults are still now. best ever. A plus. Yes. And Five star moonsault. So, so this match on YouTube, the video is an hour long. Yes. It's an eight man tag match. Yes. I was like, holy shit, what? A tag match that's an hour long. What the fuck is this? Especially an eight man tag match. Yes. Who they think they are. Yes. They're fucking Kenta Kobashi. He can do whatever he wants. Yep. I guess I'm going to watch this whole hour long match. Just kidding. The entrances took 15 minutes. And 15, then there's like. minutes in between there. Yeah. And then there's like 15 minutes at the end of inning stuff. So I was like, oh, that makes more sense. Yeah. There was, it was like, the whole match, I think, it was probably like 30. Maybe 30 minutes. Yeah, like 25, 30. Yeah. But turns out this match was really fucking cool. It was. It wasn't a drag at all. Yeah, and it was definitely like one of those one Like you think of, I don't know, we're probably bitter because WWE final matches are a fucking joke. And well, I think we're bitter because every, every single episode we've done of this podcast mm -hmm. their final match has been shit yep and so you think of that kind of thing and you think okay well this match is gonna be great because it's kibashi but it's gonna be bad because it's his final match and yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but they actually did the thing where they said they built it up they gave him this huge spectacle of a final match and then it actually was his final match, and he didn't go out like some little poophead boy, Ric Flair. There was a video game called The Final Burning. Oh. I know some an anime. Let's get him. Flame of Rekka, Final Burning. Oh, that's not wrestling. Yeah. Fuck that shit. <laughs> but yeah, so who's in this match, Bobby? Because I didn't write it down. I know Keiji Muto was. That guy rules. Uh... I know Kenta was. Other Kenta. That June Akiyama. Yes. Keiji Muto. True. Kinsuke Sasaki and Him. Kenta Kobashi. Yes. The other team Versus. was Go Shiyazaki. Yes. Kenta. Yes. Maybach Teniguchi. Uh huh. And Yoshinobu Kanimaru. Oh, right. I know him. He's in New Japan now. And he is. Who is the Moon Knight guy? I don't know. <laughs> I've never. Seen that guy before? Okay. I like his mask. Yep, and I like his little pole that yeah. makes him look like Moon Knight. He's a cool guy. But Yoshinobu Kanemaru is currently in Suzuki Gun with Minoru Suzuki and Tai Chi and Zack Sabre Jr. He's a Suzuki Gun boy? Yeah. Huh. He's the worst member of Suzuki Gun. <laughs> you, know what it, you, know what, you know what his gimmick is? Uh -uh. I think you probably watched it with us before. He's Whiskey Guy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Comes out with a bottle of whiskey yeah. and does really mediocre wrestling mm -hmm. until he spits a whiskey yeah, spits in a someone's whiskey face. Him, yeah. And he's, I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> he's awful. Yeah, I, I hate him. He's a real piece of shit. <laughs> he was good in this match, though. I was like, wow, yes. he actually wrestles? Oh, okay. Yeah. He doesn't just walk in with a bottle of whiskey and a stupid goatee. I wonder if. Maybe he's hurt or something and he can't? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's just like, ah, fuck it. I'm going to go easy on myself. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's like, maybe he's just kind of like, all right, man, I've had my fun. Maybe I can just, you know, hang out and do cool shit, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he's he's just taking it easy. Mm -hmm. Take it easy. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so anyway, my <laughs> first... My first note of the actual match is, God, KG Muto is cool. I mean, he he comes in with that like big white jacket with like the the fringe danglies on there, yeah. and he's walks in. He's like fucking KG Muto. Yeah. And everybody's like, fuck yeah, you are. <laughs> That's me. Hon, you're doing it. I like, man, I, I love that guy. I love that guy when he was the the great Muda in WCW. Like, yep. which like, I didn't know until you told me that today. Oh yeah, I told you that today, and I I I feel like. I haven't seen a lot of WCW, but from what I have seen, 
uh, the Grey Moon is like one of my favorite dudes on there. I love huh. love that yeah. guy. So this match total was thirty nine minutes and fifty nine seconds. Oh wow! Yeah. Huh. Okay. And it got a total eight point six nine out of ten. Yeah, like, like I said, this match didn't drag at all. Like, yeah. It surprisingly for being a long match, a long eight man fucking tag match, it flowed really nicely. I was, was I was never bored. Real good. Yeah. Yeah. There wasn't a moment where I was kind of like, all right, they're slowing it down because, you know, it's team old guy versus yeah. young guy kind of thing. Yeah. There was never any of that. Yeah. Which I was I thought, super expecting. I thought the coolest part, one of the coolest parts of this match was it started with Kenji Kobashi and Kenta. Oh, man. I was like, I was like, that's really fucking that cool. Was- Thing that was do. so cool yeah. when when like like both teams were like like talking amongst themselves like all right who are we gonna put him first and like obviously and then, like, Kenta, yeah. uh, Kobashi's team they were like they all pointed at him and they're like you yeah, yeah and, and then the crowd's like, like whoa really yeah okay he's like all right I'll and do then, it bros and, he, and then, no no what I loved about that part is he like shook all their hands he's like yeah let's do like, this yeah. shit yeah the god the the respect factor that comes from Kobashi is fucking crazy but then the other best part is the other team like they're all looking at each other like who could go out and, the, and then like everybody kind of realizes at the same time like there's only one guy that can do it it's gotta be Kenta yeah and then Kenta just like puts his arms in front of the, all, yeah, all the like, other dudes he's like them all behind him. I got this yeah like that was so like the way the way big Kenta shook everybody's hands and little Kenta just pushed <laughs> everybody like, out in my notes that's what I played oh, really? in, the, in the match I was like big Kenta versus little Kenta <laughs> yeah but yeah like that's so like like indicative of their characters I feel like yeah yeah especially because like little Kenta was, was total like heel team at that time uh, at least for this match I guess yeah and one another one of my notes that I remember is that there was um there like little kenta had like no respect for big kenta but yeah. like he obviously he's, he's got to play like the heel kind of thing yeah, yeah. to play the heel up but i was like man that's a weird way to go about this right now i know right like that's that's got to be hard to, yeah <laughs> to, yeah cuz be like fuck you to kenta yeah. kobashi yeah Fuck like, you, old I'm, man! I'm the new Kenta. But in, <laughs> but inside you're like, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. like I'm like the, so whole, the whole time you're just you're my <laughs> fucking hero. Oh my god, you're Kenta Kobashi. Holy shit! I can't believe I have a feud with you right now, and yeah. I'm wrestling your last match. Oh my god, I'm sorry. Yeah, and like that's got to be like a crazy honor. Yeah, right. To have to like to be in that match. You're like all these guys are just like such huge names, and it's just like Kenta. And like Kenta's yeah. big, but it's like he's like younger. Mm-hmm. Like most of these guys are kind of like been around for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, and comparatively to Kenta, I guess. Yeah, I love that too. They use this. They use this match as an opportunity to put over all the young dudes in Noah. Yeah, and like, and they really fucking did. Yeah, everybody looked great in this match. Everybody did a lot of good stuff, and they made it like like yo we're like passing the torch to the younger generation, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that, that was really cool too. Yeah. Kenta Kobasha, Kobasha, shit. <laughs> Kent, Kenta Kobasha, Ken, Kenaru Kambano, <laughs> passing the torch to old Kenny Nano. <laughs> and they're uh, like, yo, we're the old dudes. You got this young dudes take over. For uh, us. This is how they pass the thing on to the young bucks. Oh, Young Bucks. Yeah. They were there? Holy shit. <laughs> I don't um, think so. <laughs> I loved Kenta Kobashi's Goldberg entrance, where they follow him from the locker room all the way out. Yeah. Like, and he's got his I like, hood up, and he's just like, fucking, yeah. Yeah, I liked, I liked how they, um, before he even came out, they did like a quick cut commercial cut, I assume is what it was. Oh, yeah. Where he was like yeah. just in the back, and he had his like hood on, and he was just kind of looking down, and he was just like, Looking, he looked over. He was kind of like, "Yeah, we're yeah." Gonna and do I, this. I love that they showed like when the dude announced him. They showed him like like sitting in the back. Yeah, like like with his hood up, and just like, "All right, let's do it." And he like stands up. Everybody's already calling his name, and he comes out. Holy shit! Kobashi, Kobashi, Kobashi. Oh my god, is that like the greatest wrestling chant of all time? Just that be. dude's name. Fuck. Tanahashi was on the card. Oh wow, that's cool. In a six-man tag match. I I remember seeing 
uh, Tanahashi like at the end when they're like painting yeah. through like all the wrestlers yeah, standing was, on the sidelines. He side was definitely lines. there. Yeah, I wrote, "Holy shit, was that Tanahashi?" Yeah, <laughs> his like orange hair. Yeah, like yeah. young little boy he wrestled Tanahashi with, on the team with it's Tanahashi, Satoshi Kojima, and Yuji oh. Nagata. Oh wow! Versus what, Brave. What a team! Yeah, Brave. I don't yeah. know. Muhammad Yone, Takashi Sugirua. I can't, still can't say that guy's uh-huh. name. And uh, Akari, Akari, Pfft, Akatoshi Saito, sure, yeah. all of them. Yep, <laughs> they were all there. They're all they're all guys. Um, <laughs> so Kento Kobashi's streamer situation on this is fucking insane. So man, I think everybody in that crowd had a streamer that threw down. They threw all the streamers that were in Japan. Yeah, they had could, to order a whole new supply. You could barely even tell that there were people in that yep. ring or that there was a ring because it became streamers. And everybody was like, oh, holy shit. Um, but sadly, when the match starts, you can really tell how stiff his knees have gotten yeah like yeah. he like i remember when he locks up with kenta right and kenta's like really like like leaning and like moving and kobashi's just like standing yeah and kind of like walking a little bit forward and like kenta's like really having to sell like the power of the lockup you know yeah. um which is really kind of kind of hard to watch yeah, and especially but, after researching him and knowing about all his knee problems. Yeah, and like you can tell, like, like fuck, this guy is has trouble like bending his knees at all. Yeah, um, but at the same time, it also made Kobashi look super powerful. Yeah, it because did because there was no like it I did. mean it was probably Kenta selling it so well, but it was just like Kenta was trying when Kobashi was like, Nah, dude, you're half my size. He's like my my arm is larger than your body. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it worked. It worked to that effect. But yeah, no. knowing of his issues, yeah, like we know we know the real reason. We're we're smarky. Come on, Kenta Kobashi, we know it. But with that being said, his chops are still devastating as hell. Yes, that guy just. Whoops. So I got a, I got a still shot of how many streamers are in this oh, <laughs> ring. That's probably good good pick. Spin her around for me. Oh boy. Yeah, it's buried. Oh boy. You can't even see like the map part. Wow. Good. Yeah. I like So that. at least four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thousand. Oh <laughs> Don't know what that noise was I just made. <laughs> but yeah, the the beginning part kenta versus kenta was great yeah i loved it when they man when kenta took that old boy outside and he took that railing bump yeah i was like whoa watch out for this old man he's old don't do that (laughs) please stop and uh i i wrote down that i was surprised how much he was taking he and but writing that down i i made me like realize like like oh shit they're doing the kenta kobashi thing they're they're beating him up so he can look like the underdog and come mm-hmm. out at the end. He's yep. still the fucking underdog. Yep. I love that. Mm-hmm. Classic Kenta. Man. He does everything right. Yeah. He had his character from day one till his first step in the He's ring till his still. final count of three. I wonder if he was ever a heel. Thanks for using our tagline. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine he was ever yeah he's like always the fucking yeah underdog trying his best burning spirit let's fucking go burning burning final burning hammer no no nope. shit sorry i forgot final burning hammer was done to kenta <laughs> um the next my next note was this whole match is a chop fest so many chops. I wrote that down Every, too. Yeah, like everybody so gets in many. and chops each other. Like I think literally every single wrestler in this match had chops. Yeah, had chops. They're, they they took had chops, chops delivered chops. Yeah, to exchange chops. Everybody's chopping. Yeah. And at first, I didn't like it. I was like, oh, it was, why are they chopping so much? It was like, definitely a lot. It's throwing me off. Yeah. But then I realized like this is probably their way of paying homage to Kenta Kobashi, the fucking chop master. Because they're they're probably all getting in there and like yeah, Kenta's the chop master. 
Let's show him our chops. Yeah, yeah. Right? Let's show him our our uh, way that we can show him. Yeah, th- this is how it. we chop. Yeah, like, we learn from you, bro. You chop this way, we chop this way. But then when Kenta fucking throws those chops, man, he's still got it. Like, god damn. Even yeah. after, like, that arm surgery and shit he had to go through, he's still fucking There's Rosamund. so much behind them. Fucking shit. I like, loved... I loved when he and Kenta were going at it, and Kenta was doing the, the chest kicks. Oh, and then yeah, yeah. Kobashi would chop and then kick and chop. That was fucking cool. That was really cool, yeah. That was the it best was also, exchange. I loved when he, like, would finish his final chop would be to, like, their their, their shoulder, like, up here. Oh, yeah. He would just be like, Hata! Yeah, that, like, shoulder neck yeah. connector chop. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I, I wrote down... That. He fucking murdered the mask dude with his chops. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Because he started, I'm pretty sure they started with a with a chop contest. And then the mask dude brought out his little sword thingy, his Moon Knight thing. Yeah. But but Kenta Kobashi was like, no, I'm going to fight it. And he like fucking threw it off. Yeah, yeah. And then he got him in the corner and he just fucking yeah. went <laughs> ham on this dude. His fucking god, he did like two really long like flurries, yeah. and everybody's like, "Fuck yeah, let's Dude, go!" But I was hype he, about it. But then he kept doing those like like one two yeah. chops, and like I was like, "God damn, <laughs> leave this boy alone! <laughs> He's already dead. What are you doing?" <laughs> like this mask guy, f- fucking deserves a trophy. <laughs> yeah, who was that? I hope he's great now. Maybe he's some other great wrestler without oh, his mask I, I, off. I have no clue. I named all the people. Like, I don't know who it was. Well, he wasn't Kenta or Yoshinobu. And he wasn't... Who was the other guy? Uh, Go Shiozaki? Mm-hmm. He wasn't that. So whoever's left after those three <laughs> okay. guys, I think. I'm no expert. But I can tell you that I recognize those three names. And Mask Man isn't one of those guys. His name is so it's not Go Shizaki. No, it's not Kenta. No, and who was the other one? Yoshinobu. So it was Maybeck Teniguchi. Him, he took all the chops in the world from Mr. Kenta Kobashi mm-hmm. for the last time ever. Yeah, and he fucking died. <laughs> like how this guy's heart not stop because he fucking died. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is him. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure he's dead now. Yeah, cause didn't he didn't he take the pinfall too? No. Oh. Um. Was it Kenta? No, it was. Um. Was it? It wasn't Kenta. Whiskey guy. It was. Oh no! I gotta look up who it was. Kanemaru. It was. It was Yoshinobu, Kanemaru. Yeah. Cause yeah, yeah. I think after yeah. he does all those chops to Moon Knight guy, then... Uh, yeah, because uh, Mudo hit him hit with a backbreaker and a moonsault. And then yeah, Akiyama, Mudo, and, Sa- and Sasaki all signal for Kobashi to do it. The final moonsault of his That's career. Right. Yeah. And he... He fucking did. It. Fucking Great nailed one. it right on top of him I, and killed him dead. I have, <laughs> so I have in my notes here. I have a, a nice series of notes. I said, "Oh shit, that kid was crying," because they yeah. yeah they cut to that little kid who's like like crying Dude. at the end. I think when uh, Kenzo Kobashi was taking some some hits for a bit. Yeah. Um. Before the other boys so came sad. in. Yeah, that kid was like, "No, Kenzo." I was like, "Oh no, this boy." And then I said. God Keiji Muto is cool again because <laughs> he did he did something cool oh he did like that little like he, he had the dude out and he did his little like weird arm movement and like fucking did the backbreaker I think um, and then I said my next note is God Keiji Muto is cool because he did his moonsault I love Keiji Muto's moonsault yeah he's looks, got a good one too yeah it looks so good um, but then the fucking ending when they're when they all get that guy and they call for Kenta's moonsault and he does it and the ref comes to count and they're all counting with the ref. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit! 
that, that was, was so really cool. cool. Yeah, that was, that was like, like the best way to end it. It was perfect. Like his whole team is like, fuck yeah, Kenta. Yeah, and yeah. He fucking wins. That's probably what they said when they were counting. Yeah. Too. <laughs> fuck yeah, Kenta. No, you know what they're saying? What? Kobashi. Oh, that. Yeah. Actually, real life probably what probably. they did. And, and like, like real, real ass life. Like you can only you can only really see, um, like uh, Keiji Muto's face like when he goes into it. But he was so into it. Yeah. He was like, yeah. Fuck yeah, let's do this shit. Yeah. Like he it was he was real good. He was so like like proud of his friend to to like win this. Um, uh, yeah, I put at the end. I wish more American wrestlers would get this retirement treatment. Yeah, you get like some big grand send off instead of just like a match. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and then like I, I, my favorite part of this entire retirement match was when it was over and all of those wrestlers <sighs> came down. Yeah, I was like, fuck yeah. Yeah, all those wrestlers came out and then Kenta like asked everybody to get in the ring. Yeah, like everybody he just wrestled with and he like shook everybody's hand and was like hugging everybody. And man, the one like even like like I loved the spot with. When because Kenta was one of the first people he shook their head. He went through his team, and then Kenta was the one that, like the first He's, one he shook. Yeah, the, the first the, one of the of other the bad team. guy team. And even then, like Kenta had like that look on his face. He's like, I mean, I'll shake your hand, but I'm not fucking happy it, about it. Yeah, I love that. But after he shook his hand and like and, like he hugged him and like Kenta Kobashi like said something in his ear, like it cuts to Kenta's face real quick, and you can see him like like getting choked up. He's like, No, I'm the heel. I need to be a dick. <laughs> Guy. Yeah, because like then, then like the next shot they showed of him like outside the ring, he was like, "Yeah, whatever." Yeah, yeah, and then he was like, eh, "I don't care." But like you could see like in between that, he was like freaking out. I was like, yeah. "Fuck, oh, I'm so sad." Yeah, I can't believe it. That was one of my notes. I was like, cried a lot. Yeah, and also uh, Tanahashi was there. I love yep. that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Go Ace. Yeah, I th- that was such a good, a good send off for. Yeah. Probably one of the greatest boys the ever. The best I ever saw. Yeah, right. I I, I can't think, think of, of any others. Like, because even like, you know, we we were talking about like all the other dudes we've done so far have had bad last matches, real bad. Um, you know, especially Macho Man and Ric Flair, just because. <sighs> They didn't know it would be their last match, so they didn't really, like, yeah, give yeah, a shit. that's fair. They didn't put anything into it. But, like, even when you think about Ric Flair's build WWE last match with Shawn Michaels, like, it wasn't this big, like... Grand. Yeah, it wasn't like, this huge yeah. send-off. It was just like, here we go, Ric, Ric Flair is going to have a match against Shawn Michaels, and if he loses, he has to retire. And it's like... They don't ever say I like. I fucking hate that. That's right? what the WWE always does. Yeah, that's such a like, fucking cop out. Like, I feel. just say like this is his retirement yeah. match. Fucking go all in. Yeah. Have everybody come out and hug the dude and like. Yeah, have a, have fucking, a fucking have a, send off. Have a party. Yeah, dude. like not not be like if you lose, you can retire and you're gonna have to give yeah. up. It's stupid. It I quit match. It doesn't like, feel good. Yeah. Like feels bad, this man. Felt, Not JPEG. This felt fucking great. Yeah, it felt really like, good. God damn, man. Everybody's like solidarity, like behind this dude. He's like one of the greatest of all time. And they know it. Yeah. You know? Like they're they're showing that it's like it's like way more respectful too than to say like, no, you have to have a match and if you lose you have to retire. It's like that's kinda disrespectful. Yeah. I, I just, I just feel, I feel like it's just, a, it's a cop out for them to not have a grand send off. It's just like, oh yeah. well, he's gonna have to retire because he's gonna lose. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Like, and I also, yeah, it's also sad when like Kinsuke Sasaki retired shortly after this match too. Oh, yeah, he's a good guy. I didn't know anything about him, but he did a good job. Mm-hmm. All, all eight of those men did a wonderful job. Thank you, everybody. Great match. And he. Said he didn't want to have a final match. He just wanted to retire. Just wanted to be done. Oh. So. Oh. <laughs> no. Yeah. So you should have a final match. Yeah. Well, there's Kenta Kobashi's career in a nutshell, everybody. Yeah. Sometimes he'll pop up and do commentary for New Japan. I've seen every once in a while. Yeah, he also did like a, a thing for... Um. 
I'm pretty sure it was um, New Japan where he came out and he was like like a moderator basically for the match oh. to make sure that like Suzuki Gun didn't get involved. Oh, That's so he cool. was like he was like the muscle. Of yeah, yeah. The match. That's cool. I've seen him uh, deliver some chops from time to time from the from the commentary table. Nice. When those bad boys get get too salty with him, he's like, "Hey, you, you, want, you, you want this you, chop? You want, you, no, you want I don't." It, it's wasn't it's wasn't he a commentator for the Kenny Omega v Tanahashi? Oh, I don't I remember. Feel like he, he was. I feel like Kenny Omega like got snarky and he was he like did this and Kenny Omega was like, "Whoa." Yeah, I th- I, I feel that. like that was a thing that happened, like, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I love that everybody still sells the fact that Kobashi's got the fucking hardest yeah. chops, even though he's retired. Nobody wants him. Yeah, and he's, They're like, oh, I'm I'm sorry, don't do it, please. Cut your head off. I'll die. Only, only so, nobody can take him. Well, I was gonna ask you earlier, and I said I'll ask you later. Oh. Is Kenta? The Kenta that was in NXT mm. as Hideo yeah. Hitami? Yeah, same yeah. guy. So And now he's in New Japan. He's again. back in New Japan again? Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I was like, isn't that the same same yep. guy? Same guy. Same Kenta? He was nice. he's pretty much taken under Kenta Kobashi's wing, I think, when he was in Noah, just starting out. There was a funny thing I saw like a long time ago when I was first getting into Kenta. Like before he was in NXT, I I started getting into him for a little bit, and there's a funny thing where he and like Kenta Kobashi were doing like an interview together on some Japanese TV show, and um, the interviewer asked like, "Oh, so you know your your real name isn't Kenta, so why did they give you the same name as Kenta Kobashi?" And like Kenta Kobashi laughed, and he's like, "Yeah, why did they do that?" And, and Kenta was like, "I have no idea." <laughs> Like, we're on the same promotion. I don't know why they did it's that. It's probably going to be a little confusing. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Kobashi returned to Noah to serve as a special witness for the GHC, heavy, GHC Heavyweight Championship oh. match between Minoru Suzuki and challenger Naomichi Marufuji. And Kobashi's role included making sure that the Suzuki Gun stable did not interfere in the match. Oh, it was in Noah. I forgot that Suzuki Gun was a thing before New Japan. Because I, I don't I don't watch Noah. What? Is that even still a thing? Was Noah still around? Yes. I mean, because this was in 2015 that he was he showed up to Noah. So I think it is. I mean, yeah. it's I mean greatly diminished since losing all these huge names yeah. and stuff. But I, I think recorded that new Japan. Is, that new Japan is doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. New Japan's doing it now. <laughs> yep, but they yeah. are. True. Um. Oh. Oh. What? Oh, no. What? Okay. I said that whole interview thing wrong. What? So, <laughs> Kenta Kenta Kobashi uh-huh. is his real name, right? Yes. Kenta's real name is Kenta Kobayashi. Weird. I think in that interview, um, the interviewer was like, so when you came into Noah, why didn't, why didn't you just... Why didn't they just give you a different name? And he's he's like, I don't know. They didn't want to. They wanted me to keep like my real name. They wanted me to keep using Kenta. And like Kenta Kobashi was like, Yeah, it's kind of confusing. Yeah. Kenta Kobashi Blaze. Whoa, that's cool. Kenta Kobashi Blaze Hammer Infinity. Apparently, that was another one of his ring names. That's a cool name. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. There it is. We done it. That's Kenta Kobashi. Kenamashi. He is 52 now. Um, Greatest wrestler of all time. He retired at 40. Wait, was it 46? Yeah, 46. Um, For comparison, AJ Styles is currently 42. Which is crazy because Kenta Kobashi has done so much more with his career. And right. then AJ Styles could do to catch up in the next, yeah, in the few, next few years. Four years. Yeah. There's um, no way he's ever going to amount to. Yeah. Also to concern to <clears throat> also to compare. Uh, I think it said it at the beginning of the show, Undertaker's like the same age as Kenta Kobashi. Concerned. Was a good a few word years as well. older. I am concerned. Yeah. 
Undertaker should have retired when he was 46 about. But he didn't. He's doing terrible now. Stop. <laughs> the, uh, his match with stop. Roman Reigns was actually pretty decent. Oh, his he was retirement match? No, his that one the one that was one? just the recent one where he, oh, he tag teamed with Roman. Oh, that one. The um, I didn't watch it. Okay. Drew McIntyre and I heard it was decent too. Yeah, okay. it was actually pretty good. But that man moves like he's a like a rock table. Yeah, like <laughs> a freaking table. That's a good way. To They're gonna it throw too. someone through him and he's gonna break. Yep. Um, also. Minoru Suzuki is about that age too. I believe he's fifty-two, and he's going hard still. Yeah, but he's got it juiced. <laughs> yeah, he probably, all the he's way. doing all the juice. He's all the way juicing. He's probably he probably drinks a lot of juice. Is what I'm saying. He's he he probably does. He's a very healthy man. He's in charge of Suzuki Gun. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. He's the leader of Suzuki Gun. Who is else Suzuki is Gun gonna go away when he goes away? You think? Probably. Hmm. I hope not. No, he'll probably still yeah. be there, but just won't wrestle. He doesn't say. Do you think he just retire and just and just be in charge of everything? He'll, yeah, he'll come out with like his cool like black hat. And like, yeah, it's me, motherfucker. Yeah, Minoru Suzuki is a, he's crazy. He's a badass. Minoru baby. Suzuki is, yeah, he's scary. <laughs> he's scary. Uh, he's scary boy. Kurt Angle is what fifty. Curtis. Angle Iron. I believe Kurt Angle's 50, just retired this year. Mm, I actually typed in Curtis Angle Iron. That's not right. <laughs> wrong. I gotta stop doing dumb jokes. You're wrong. Um, he is... Yeah, 50. Nailed wow. it. Perfect. Yeah. It's, Turns 51 it's just, into seven. Yeah, when you think about all these other wrestlers, like, around the same age or around the same age he was when he retired, like, it's a crazy thing that he retired... So much sooner, just because he went so fucking hard when he was young mm-hmm. that he f- fucked his old self, basically. But he, you know, he's Kenta Kobashi. He doesn't have to worry about like money. You know, yeah, yeah. It, if, he, if married, he married a famous singer too. So, yeah, so. true. If and if he's ever like strapped for cash, he can call literally any Japanese TV show and say, "Hey, you want me to be a guest star on your show?" I'll come on your on your uh, your talk show in the back. Fuck yeah, Kenta right. Kobashi. Here's fifty thousand dollars. Here, here's all the money we have. Studio's yeah. closing after this, but He's... man, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he doesn't have to worry though, because you know, not like they like, feel bad for a lot of these older guys who retire and then everybody forgets about them and they're like, no, I'm poor now. But not him. Not KK. Yeah, and. Like, like Sting, Sting's another one. He retired oh, when he yeah. was fifty-six. Whoa, really? He was fifty-six. He's sixty now. Holy shingle dingle! Wow, well, and that's, the, that's the, another one. When when Seth Rollins broke Sting, yeah, that, that um, that's another one. They was in twenty fifteen. They didn't know it'd be his last match. Sadly. Yep. Oh, Stinger! Wow, fifty-six. Dang, he was moving all right. And then Seth Rollins broke. Finn Balor with the buckle bomb thing and they were like you gotta stop doing that for a God while damn it Seth fucking idiot and I started oh, to really hate Seth Rollins after that I was like you're just hurting people yeah like obviously not on purpose but Seth well everybody that was the life and times of Kenta Kobashi. do you have anything more to add he's a cutie oh he's <laughs> uh, he, he was kind of cute when he was younger yeah He's not. He's he's pretty broken now. He's pretty beat up. Yeah. He he he's looks like a fucking hardened fighter. Yeah. Which he is does. great. He doesn't look like no goddamn <laughs> Ric Flair old white man. Shit. <laughs> Woo. Like some, no, I've, some frail. I think we've hit it all. Yep. Oh, Kenta Kobashi, man. Really, really, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Yeah. Right. From like, fucking what I read him. and what I watched. And whatever he so said, good. Yep, he is Kenta Kobashi Blaze. Thank you, everybody. Have a burning hammer evening or day, whatever time you're listening to this at time. Yeah. And we'll see you on the next burning edition of Square Hammer Cast. Circled oh. Hammer Burning. <laughs>
<laughs> Thanks for listening, and we love you. Burn it up. Burning. Burning.